Hey there, the Jelly Man here. I got a question about well, he didn't explicitly say dual axis, right? What he did say was, what if you have two graphics or two line charts and they're on different scales, right? And you end up with this kind of scaling problem that you can't see the two of them together. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say I have, I'm just using Superstore, you know, my favorite. And let's say we have, let's just do this by month, right? And I've got something like sales, right? So the maximum number is like all the way up to, you know, 180,000. And maybe we'll do something like quantity, right? So if I bring quantity in here, what you'll notice is the range of values is vastly different. This one is, you know, maxing at 2,000. This one's at around, you know, 180, 200,000. So if you put this on the same axis, you're going to have this issue, right? So I drop this in here, make it a dual axis. You can see straight away you have that problem. And actually, you know, I'm just going to add some color. Let's move this here right and that is the problem that you can't even see the trends and if you saw some of my videos about um, stock market analysis that's a great example where you have one particular stock that is you know let's say the S&P 500 or something like that and it's three thousand dollars right so three thousand here three K and then you have something like you're measuring I don't know some sort of other company and their stock price is like a dollar Right, so you can't put them on the same axis and you can't see them together because you want to go, well, what happens to this company when there's a downturn, when there's an you know, upswing, whatever it may be, right? But stock market is just one problem. When I used to be in research, I had the same thing where I'd be measuring electrical signals, right, in some composite structures and the values would be very small, but you wanted to compare it to something that had a whole different dimension to it. Right, so you couldn't put it on the same one. Now, back in the day, I didn't know Tableau. I wish I did, right? But in Tableau, you can do it way easier. So let's go back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move these back out. Right, I'm going to show you a few options you can do, and it really depends on what kind of data you have, right? Here we have two. I, I'll describe them as numerical count values, right? Whereas if you have percentage, it's treated a little bit differently. So in here, actually, let's start with the percentage. So if I grab something like profit ratio, right, one's a percentage, one's a value like this, you really can't combine them except for a dual axis. You've got no other options because they're just two different types of, they're two different measures, right? So the most I would do is a dual axis like this, right? Make sure the colors are okay, right? Let's move this over here. And one other thing I would do is if the profit ratio is this one i would actually change this format to blue all right so i'd come in here go blue bold right i always bold it because for some reason when you change the color it's hard to see and then this one i would make orange right bold right that way there's no confusion as to which axis you should be um, looking at so little trick there so that's how you would do it if it's two different measures so going back to the first example of what if they're not different in this way. So let's get rid of profit ratio. Let's do quantity again, right? You would dual access, right? In this case is your, oops, hang on. I did two quantities, right? You would dual access this again, right? But again, you got a different one. If that's what you want to do, great. But there's a third option, right? Is what if you want them on the exact same axis? Well, the only, real, the only way I know how to do that is to do what's called normalization basically means we want to change this from account from zero to whatever and convert it all the way back to zero to one, right? So one will always be the maximum value, right? And this is in cases where you don't really care so much about the value. It's more the, the pattern, the trend. So let me show you how to do it. It's actually remarkably easy, right? So what you want to do is, and I'll duplicate this so you can see kind of a before and after. Let's just do it for quantity for now. Right, so you got two of the quantities and we're going to convert them. So what you can do is you can do a shelf calculation, right? So you can just double click here, right? And go divided by window max, right? So we're applying a max function for a window of data, right? And we're going to do sum of quantity. So very easy. It's just whatever you've gotten written on this left side, close up the brackets. And that's it. And what you'll notice here, that's converted it to one. How has it done that? Well, let's bring these labels in. What it's done is the max function looks for the maximum value in your range. In this case, 2,000, 
215. And then it divides every single value by that value. So you know you've done it right when you can see the maximum value, go all the way down, and that's 1 as well. So that, that means it's converted it to 1. All right? This is a little bit different from the quick table calculation, which is percent of total. Okay, so if I come in here, you see that they're different because it's it's a different formula. It's a different. It, they're two different things, right? So be careful to be like, oh, you know, I'll just do a shortcut and go percent of total because you can think that if I divided it, that's really a percentage, but it's not really doing that. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so we now have this um, scale from zero to one, and what I'm going to do is for this one, I'm going to move this sum of quantity to the label, right? So I have a one a zero to one scale here, but I can still see the sum of the, uh, the actual quantities if I want to. And because we're going to be doing a dual axis, I'm going to click on this label and just go only when selected, right? So just a bit minimalistic. That way, it only pops up when I'm interested, All right? So let's bring back sales again. And we'll do the exact same thing. So open it up, bracket window max. Uh, sum of sales, right, and enter, right? So this is now one zero. We can bring these labels in as well if we want to, right? Uh, let's get rid of quantity. I don't know why that's there. Yep. Okay, sum of sales, and this is also set to select. Okay, and now we can dual access, right? This one, don't forget, synchronize the axis and then you can get rid of it. So make sure you always synchronize first before getting rid of it. Otherwise it does all sorts of invisible things. So now you have them on the same one with one set of axes, right? So that's a third option of how to combine. And that's it. So hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time.